Welcome to No Instructions. I'm Bob. And I'm Josh. And we're back. Took a week off. That was a much needed week off. It was. For lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. It was a busy week, too. Uh, We actually took off, like, took off the week. Like, everybody had time off. I mean, it was a holiday, July 4th here in the States. But we also just, like, shut down for a few days. It was needed. Yeah. No doubt. But it was also a big week because there's a whole bunch of birthdays. It is. It's my favorite week. Whoa. Sorry. Hey. I was turning down the volume on my phone and Instagram was playing a video. <laughs> Anthony's hyper professional. Yep. <laughs> anyway, it was a big week. Yeah. Birthdays. It's, it's like my favorite week of the year. Because it's the middle of summer, which I love the middle of summer. It's July 4th. It's my birthday, my son's birthday. It's now now we're here. It's your birthday. It's one of our other friends' birthday. It's it's been my birthday what, even before. Well, we I mean, here. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But I could have cared less it was your That's birthday. True. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just it's a lot going on. And it's cele- like everybody is in the mood for like cookouts and mm-hmm. fireworks and pool parties and just being outside and enjoying each other's company in the warmth, and I love it. It's a really, I like it too, but it is a heavy concentration within a few days. Oh, it, yeah. For our two families together, specifically. Um, like, it's, you know, the two of our birthdays, your son, uh, my nephew has one. Oh, that's right. Yesterday, my yep. wife's is next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was somebody else's last week too, and I can't remember whose it was. But plus then the 4th of July is that kind of everybody celebrates that. It's just a whole lot in a small period of time. There's a lot of hot dog eating. Oh, yeah. I've had more hot dogs in the last couple weeks than the previous year. Yep. Which is fine. I like hot dogs. I don't want to eat any more cake. You know, I kind of avoided cake. I I wasn't going to get a cake, and then your wife amazingly threw me a surprise party. <laughs> Which I am not good at receiving surprise parties, apparently. I had no idea what was going on. Even though kids yelled surprise, I just thought that they were playing. Well, the kids kind of barely yelled surprise. It was like, okay, kids, ready? One, two, three. Surprise. Happy birthday. Surprise. Yeah, I thought they were just being silly kids. Because yeah. my wife and I spent the day out together, so you guys had our, our kids over here with yours. And I remember we pulled up in the driveway. There were a bunch of cars. I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad that they were, like, hanging out with our kids and they had company over. <laughs> And then we came in, and there was everybody just standing there staring at me. I'm like, hey, what are you all doing? They're like, it's a surprise party. I'm like, well, my bad. I'm sorry my kids were here for your surprise party. They're like, no, it's for you, you dumb dumb. I'm like, (laughs) oh. (laughs) I don't know what to do. (laughs) But that was the, and then your wife got me a carrot cake, which was awesome. But after, like, gorging on all the 4th of July cookout stuff, I'm like, I don't want to eat anything. I was yeah. like, hey, birthday cake. I'm like, hooray. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm go throw up. I didn't eat any of my own birthday cake. Uh, but my mom, I think it was my mom, somebody showed up with two chocolate meringue pies. And, uh, yeah, ate a lot of that. Yep. <laughs> Actually, when the party was over and everybody left, there was almost an entire pie left. And I'm like, sweet. <laughs> that one is mine. Dibs. Yep. So that hung around for a few days, and then I didn't finish it and ended up getting rid of the rest of it. But it I remember um, one of the last times we spoke, we spoke about key lime pie and how I don't like key lime pie. <laughs> yeah. And then you had one here that I guess one of the pie places made. Oh, I guess. I it was know. really good. It was it was low key. It was subtle. Low key lime? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was good. And it was so just nonchalant and unassuming that it was like, it looked like a pie with little you know, squirty, fancy things of whipped cream on the end. And then somebody took literally, like, a pinch of green, like, speckle, um, what is that, like, colorized sugar kind of decoration stuff. Oh, And okay. just, like, <laughs> put it right in the middle of the pie. <laughs> like, didn't sprinkle it anywhere. It didn't make it look really pretty. It was like somebody was like, hey, did you decorate that pie? They're like, oh, my bad. And I just, forgot. like, <laughs> angrily or really sarcastically just put, like, a nickel size right in the middle of a pie. Huh. Like, boom, there you go. Weird. No I, one's going to get any of this if you cut this pie up evenly. It's funny, you know, I that whole party, I was kind of outside the whole time, so I missed most of the food. I didn't even know there was a key lime pie here. Yep, That's it was funny. pretty good. I had the last little piece because everybody else was being really nice. 
and trying not to take the last of whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, nah, I don't care. I want to try it. <laughs> That's mine. It's interesting that you tried it knowing that you don't like key lime pie. Somebody told me it wasn't so bad. Oh. I was warned beforehand because they were like, ooh, key lime pie. I'm like, ew. They're like, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not like super tart and really gross. It's huh. It's okay, you know. All right, we'll try it. I'm like, ooh, that's not bad. Huh. But I wouldn't order it again. <laughs> Interesting. If, unless it was sitting here free, then I'm not going to order it at the pie place. Yeah. We have a pie place in town, which is kind of... We neat. we went there the other night again uh, and got... Your wife is very excited <laughs> about the pie place. I mean, pie is good. I like pie. We went. Th- so I went there to pick up your cake. And oh. I was there oh. by myself, and so I'm like... Go in there and I, I look, I'm asking them if they have this cake and they're like, oh yeah, we have carrot cake. We have to go get it out of the freezer in the back and let me. It'll take me a minute. And so while one lady went to get that, I'm just sitting there looking at the ice cream. I'm like, ooh, they have peach ice cream. That means mm. they can make a peach milkshake. <laughs> and so ooh. I was there by myself, so I didn't have to buy it for anybody else. So I got a peach milkshake from that place. It's nice. pretty, pretty good, pretty good. I would highly suggest it. Anyway, yeah, if you have a pie place in your town, take advantage of it because pretty good i didn't know how necessary a pie place was and you said it was your nephew's birthday and i remember your wife was like what kind of pie does he like i'm like jenny is itching for any reason to go back to the pie pie. yeah it was good but they do have good ice cream and stuff we've been taking the kids there last couple you know weeks we'll like take them out for something special and go there it's pretty cool you know but luckily the summer that phase of the summer will be over soon (laughs) so it's winding down be eating fewer terrible things? Uh, probably not, but ideally we would. What do you have on tap for the rest of the summer? Because like I feel it's it's already halfway over, which is kind of weird. In my opinion, summer's over after birthday week. Like summer's done. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I don't really know. Oh, the, we talked about everybody going on vacation, like not together, but yeah. I know we just talked about a week off, but. Oh, Everybody in the company, all four of us, talk about going on like our own individual vacations, kind of like a a block of time. And I don't, did I talk about what I was hoping to do with my son? I don't know. I don't know if that was. Uh, on here I know or that. Not. I don't even know if we even talked about that whole thing. Probably not, because we haven't recorded in a couple weeks. Yeah. So a couple weeks ago, I was having some a struggle. I was having parenting struggles, especially with my oldest son, who just turned nine, and I'm trying to figure out what he is interested in so that I can help foster that. And I think just like most people's kids, he's interested in playing video games and looking at Pokemon cards and things that by some very abstract 2019 definition could be useful skills. But yeah. Sure. So my wife and I decided a long time ago that when we homeschool the kids, music is going to be part of their curriculum. Like they're going to learn how to play an instrument we want to leave it up to them as to what instrument that they may you know, want to play. Uh, he talked about playing the guitar, and then he, he backed that down. And I was like, well, my wife is going to learn how to play the piano, so maybe you can learn how to play the piano. I don't want to do that. And everything was very like, I don't want this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go here. I don't. And it was wearing on me. It was wearing on me pretty hard. Um, I, he likes to draw, and he likes to make these comic books. And so there's an art class or an art camp that the local library puts on. Hmm. And I'm like, hey, man, art camp. That sounds great. I don't want to go to art camp. That sounds dumb. I don't want to do that. I'm like, but it, but it's not dumb. And I, I know you. I know our kind. <laughs> you're going to complain about it until you go and you have a good time. And then you're going to thank us for it. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. That's terrible. And he was just like super adamant about not doing anything. And it's, it's, been, it's been heavy on the soul lately. Hmm. And I know that we talked about... You know, you taking piano lessons forever and kind of needing to be pushed and really grateful for that push later on in life when you had something that kind of made you stand apart. And I didn't have anything as a kid that I had no special skills. I mean, I played t-ball and baseball like kids do, but I mean, I wasn't going to go out to the high school team. I wasn't good enough to do that. I played football and I hated it. I played the piano and I was too impatient for it. And so it was really hard to find that thing that really spoke to me. And I want to try to help him find that for himself. He just is really resistant to it. Hmm. And so we were talking about the vacation thing. And we talked about going home to Florida um, to go see all our family. And I was talking to my wife. I'm like, I feel really drawn just to go on a trip with just he and I. 
I was like, I don't want to exclude the rest of the family. And she's like, no, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. Somewhere that I can take him that is new, that would open his eyes to kind of to see something he's never seen before. Um, oh, and in response to his, his resistance to doing anything, he wrote me uh, a schedule for life. And it is like, <laughs> wake up, 1030, eat breakfast, puff cereal. And it's just like every by hour of the day, what he wants to do for the rest of his life. And I'm like, well, this is fun. <laughs> and very narrow. I'm like, hooray for this. Um, but you need to see things that are awesome. And you need to see things that you've maybe never seen before. Yeah. So that you can see stuff that's outside of your little world that maybe will spark some interest or some motivation or some inspiration to do something that he hasn't seen yet. And so I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what to do and where to go and how much it's going to cost and what I'm hoping to get out of it for him. Cause I don't want to project too hard. Cause I don't want to have some unreal expectation or assume the trip is a failure. If he doesn't walk away, like enlightened, I found my thing. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, in all honesty is probably the way it, that would probably never happen. A trip like this, I would imagine would be kind of exposure to stuff, yeah. but not necessarily like I found a thing that I'm really interested in. Or, oh, wow. My world is larger than it was before. It's mm -hmm. just, at some point in the future, he'll look back and be like, oh, yeah, that time we went on that one trip, that's when I first heard about blah. Yeah. Or I realized there's more types of people or there's more types of places or there more whatever, you know, down the road kind of stuff. And so I looked into going to New York because I figured, um, like, as far as the density of new and exciting things that he may have never seen or never tried or never eaten or, or whatever, I figured I could get the most efficient trip or the most efficient experience out of New York City. Hmm. Um, going to some of the museums to see some of the things that he studied before, you know, at the Met and the MoMA. And do you think, uh, I'm just curious, do you think that would be, New York City would be overload? I don't know. And I was looking into how long we would go and where we would stay and kind of what I would include in any kind of itinerary. And mm -hmm. um, the way I, I travel really chill. I travel, I'm a meandering traveler. So I don't know about overload as far as like things to do or like, all right, we're going to go tomorrow. We're going to go see this. And I don't want it to be an action packed itinerary fulfilling experience. I just want him to see and be exposed to things that he, you know, hasn't been or wouldn't be. Right. I only so, ask that because I know for me, even as an adult, New York City is too much. Like, it's, I like it when I'm there, and I usually enjoy the trip overall, but when I am in the city, wrapped mm -hmm. in movement, and wrapped in smell, and wrapped in noise, and wrapped in all that stuff at the same time, I'm just like, what is happening here? <laughs> it's just like being in a tornado of stuff. Hmm. Uh, and I think you would probably get used to that, you know, the longer you're there, the more time. I've only been there a handful of times, so it's a lot for me, but that's me. So. And I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm still trying to figure it out right now because New York's expensive. I mean, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a place to stay is, you know, way more than plane tickets out there. And I mm -hmm. thought about maybe just doing like a road trip somewhere. Maybe mm -hmm. not having such a lofty goal out of just a, you know, a short under a week trip. Because I don't think you can do New York justice in under a week, like in a couple of days to see all the things that, you know, we would hope to see. Yeah. My wife was like, you know, maybe, you know, go see a show or something. I'm like, well, that's crazy expensive to go see a show. And they only have shows certain days a week. And that would be pretty much like the trip if it were a short turnaround. So I don't know. But I think my my goal for a summer vacation is for my son to see some stuff that he's never seen and to try to motivate him to not say no to every little thing that's different than what he is currently experiencing. And I know that that is, we've talked about that before, like is a very instinctual response for price men. I've fortunately been experienced to a whole bunch of stuff from across the planet and am able to meter that response yeah. to some extent. Yeah. My wife still has to push me to get up and go do things. And then once we're actually doing them, I'm like, okay, this is not bad. He doesn't have that that level of experience or the opportunities that I've had in the past. And so I want to try to give him something, but I don't really know what to do. Hmm. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, 
for one thing, like you're you're facing this with him, but you have other kids. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the same things, I mean, they're all different personalities and stuff. I understand that. But I wonder if similar things will come up with the other kids later on and and you'll have to try to figure this out again. Or if it would be worth, I don't know, trying to do the same idea that you're doing with the whole family. It's a different dynamic, though. I don't know. Well, I figured uh, for efficiency's sake, if I could get the oldest and the loudest one, kind of set or if, if this works with him maybe his excitement or his experience would trickle down hmm. because he sets the tone for a lot of things he sets the tone for dinner time for new experiences you know if he initially goes yeah that's gross like they're going to to accept that and they're going to see that as truth and react accordingly so dump in a bag figure maybe this experience with him first uh, not that I don't want to do it with the other two. Yeah, that's understandable. So. Um, but I think that initially it would have more positive results coming from the loudest one in the group. Yeah, I can see that. Well, he's the oldest too. I mean, he may be able to grab onto what you're trying to convey mm-hmm. faster and easier than younger ones too. But Well, that's cool. I mean, have you, you figured anything out? No. <laughs> <laughs> figured it out that I don't know if I can afford a trip to New York. Yeah. I wonder what some other things would be like that. I mean, you know, you could always do pick an event in a in a closer place. Maybe there's something in Nashville or um, DC or something like that where there's yeah. an event that's a little more multicultural or multi. I, I don't know. You know. I thought about going to Comic Con. Oh gosh. Talking about money. Yeah. <laughs> money and exposure to things you've never seen before. Yeah, like, that's true. I thought about going to Comic-Con. I thought about going to D.C. for the you know Project Egress kind of thing, but that's mm. the week before. Mm. Um, so, I don't know. Nothing's come of that yet. Yeah. Yeah. At least you're thinking about it. Maybe that'll turn into to something, even locally. You know, maybe just it being on your mind will make you notice something else, an opportunity that you hadn't noticed before or something. Well, he started art camp this week, or he started yesterday, oh. and surprise, surprise, he liked it. <laughs> he met a friend. He showed me the thing that he was working on. Um, I guess this art camp is space-themed, because I guess most things in this country are space-themed in, around July, 50 years after the first moon landing. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, he told me about this kid that he met that was cool and likes all the same stuff that he likes, and then he worked with... Uh, some kind of pastels, pastel somethings. Mm-hmm. Charcoal pastels, is that a thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I don't remember, but the teacher taught him how to make planets. Hmm. So they had these little pieces of round cardstock of various sizes and then how to kind of make color perspective like from the edge and then going out toward the middle to make the flat thing appear round. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. He nice. picked a lot of really awesome colors and then he was trying to explain to me like the story behind it because he likes the... The rabbits, you know about rabbits? Oh yeah, those things are stupid. Yep, I agree. But he was explaining to me how this whole thing is a rabid solar system. I'm like, the color on this is amazing. He's like, yeah, yeah, but like these, this is where the dumb rabbits go. And I'm like, ah, sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, did you pick these colors? He's like, oh yeah, I did. I'm like, you did a great job. He's like, oh, but look, the silly rabbits go here. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a kid, and this is what he's excited about. But I'm like, you did something awesome that was not. Silly, dumb, cartoon character related. Well, yeah, but I mean, the, the it's hard to remember the lens that they're looking at stuff through. Yeah. And they're learning things that they don't realize they're learning through that lens, even though we want to see the lens. And we want, you know, like I, my oldest, we don't let them play a lot of video games. Um, it's We meter screen time pretty hard. And I know we're, we're like overbearing about it, but whatever. That's where we are. And... Um, so for a long time, he's wanted this Jurassic World game. Super into dinosaurs, super into Jurassic World and everything. And he's wanted this game. And a while back, he was asking me if he could buy this video game for the PS4. And I'm like, you've never saved that much money. I'm like, nowhere even close. If you want to save that money, you can buy the game, and it will be your game, but you need to understand that it's my PS4. 
and you don't get to play it whenever you want, and you're still going to have the same screen time limits and all that, you know. I mean, but hey, if you want to save 50 bucks for a game that you may never get to play, <laughs> hmm. that's up to you. And he did. And it's kind of counter to his personality. He's he doesn't he's not a saver and he's not a not real good at waiting on things, but he did. And then once he had the money, he asked me about, you know, well, can we look online and order it because they don't have it in stores anymore? And I, I couldn't when he asked me about it. He was actually really patient about, okay, well, wow. whenever you're, whenever is a good time, can we look at it? And, you know, I, I kind of intentionally waited a couple of days to see if he was going like, <laughs> to nag me about it, and he didn't. And then one Saturday morning, we were sitting around doing nothing, and he recognized the moment as, like, Dad is not engaged. He's not busy. He's not on the way to something. To and, but he still very patiently asked. He's like, hey, would now be a good time for us to look at the thing and see if we can just find it? It was really cool because I was impressed with how he, I don't know, he kind of leveled up on some stuff. Nice. With the process yeah. for that. Um, and that was really cool. The, the whole reason I'm saying this, I was proud of him for the saving, for the patience. Um, and then he got the game finally. We gave it to him. I gave him some kind of extra time, screen time the first day so he could you know, play it and enjoy it and not be in such a rush and then he and then he um just would not stop talking about it he was over at my house and chatted my ear off for quite some time about it and he talked to me because he used to watch videos at school yep yay for school um (laughs) of this video game so he would talk to me about it as if he had played it a bunch of times anyway so I had already heard all the same stuff, but now that he's actually played it and has his own game save, oh my goodness. Yep. I don't care. <laughs> I love the kid. I love how passionate he is about a thing, but man, okay. But I have to remember, all that to say, I have to remember that the entire game situation and my annoyance with hearing about this game over and over actually represents a decent amount of maturity improvement for him and so even though when i'm annoyed and i'm like acting like i'm listening but i'm not actually listening to him talk about the game i have to remember that like you know he's growing and he's he's improving a lot of stuff that i've wanted him to approve so that's That's great yeah that's good it's nice to see that because i don't know if it's a maybe an oldest kid thing but he i don't want to like talk bad about my kids Specifically, because in case he gets bored in the future and goes back and listen to this, he's he's. We've had more frustrating times together than me and the other kids, and that's partly because he's been around longer, mm. right? But I think first kids get a harder time from their parents generally. I know they have from me. He does from me, but we just have more things that we kind of butt heads about, and we have more like stuff we're trying to get through to him maybe I do but I think it's because I want him to be a leader and I want him to Hmm. set the example for the other ones and for everybody that's younger than him so I put an unnecessary extra amount of pressure on him and on his behavior and on his voices and all that stuff and I recognize that about myself that's not really fair to him but there's a, a certain pressure I put on him as the oldest without meaning to but I know that I do it you know um, but I think that because of that extra pressure and that extra like attention and like I'm paying attention to him more about certain things, it makes it seem like he's harder to deal with. You know what I mean? Oh. It's I don't. It's not him. It's yeah. not that he's oldest. But I think I handle him differently than I handle the rest to a higher standard or something like that. I don't know. So sorry, kiddo, if you're listening to this in the future. Sorry, I don't treat you the same <laughs> as everybody else. But I think that's because I just want him to be the best that he can be, you know? I want him to, like, be kind, and I want him to set a good example that everybody that follows after him is going to follow and stuff. So, I don't know. Anyway, tangent there. Point being, the frustrating stuff can still be an indicator that, you know, there's, there's good stuff happening within art camps and within video games and stuff. Well, I tried to dangle some carrots in front of my son for art camps and things like that. But, I mean, like you're saying, I think that... 
I think I look too holistically at my son, especially my oldest son, like you're saying. I put these things like I project uh, this little moment in time is going to affect you when you're in your 20s. Like if mm. I don't address this one little second in space, you're going to jail yeah. or you will be a murderer yep. or some type of tyrant. And I think it takes things like when they go over to other people's house and you hear kind of feedback from people. I'm like, he really is a good kid. Yeah. Like all the tiny little nitpicky, like just eat the crust on your sandwich and little moments that are stingy and just annoying. Uh, I think when you, if, if there was a report card, not from, you know, school or not from your perspective, and I honestly believe that they act differently around, you know, the, the, the parents than they do on their own. And I often wonder, like, how my kid would react in situations when I'm not around. Hmm. Good, bad, or indifferent. And this weekend, like, we, there are struggles. You know, he, he took something that didn't belong to him again and got caught and lied about it. And in that disciplinary moment, like, he opened up to me how difficult it is to try to resist temptation. Hmm. And so not only did I have to deal with that, uh, I had your two oldest boys in the Jeep with me because we were going back to my house. I'm like, okay, three people that I know, str- four people, including myself, that struggle with this temptation. Mm-hmm. Like, what does temptation mean? And they all gave me a, a very appropriate definition. So I'm like, what are some things that you can do when you find yourself in a situation where you want to take something, but you don't either pay for it or it's not yours or you don't think anybody's around? And they gave me very practical things that they could do instead. Hmm. And so it was a little kind of check on learning I had for the kids, like all of them. And I'm like, if you are so excited about a thing that you're like, man, this thing is so great. Go tell somebody and bring them to that thing instead of taking it from its place and then keeping it later or whatever. I'm like, come get me and show me how excited that thing is. I was like, go get your friends. It may be theirs. Or it may be nothing at all, or they may have a different perspective, or it may be just some dirty kids meal toy that was left out for a year that no one really cared about, and then maybe you can have the thing. <laughs> right. And all of those came from their mouths. Hmm. It was awesome. That's cool. So your kids did really, really great. Okay, <laughs> that's good to hear. With <laughs> practical examples of how to be better versions of themselves. Hmm. And it came out of a moment of weakness for my son, and it allowed me to share... Uh, you know, real life emotions like temptations with I mean, everybody is tempted with things that they, yeah. that they want, that they either can't afford or know that they shouldn't have like with patients and things that are really, really difficult. And he was able to share that with his friends. And I'm like, now it's up to you three to check on each other. Hmm. That's cool. And they're like, yeah. And they were just back there talking about stuff, just hmm. being kids. And it was, that's pretty awesome. I didn't know that was, happened. I know, and I wasn't really going to bring it up. I was just hoping that one day it would just kind of work. Because I, I feel if if they come up, just like I do, if I'm able to come up with a solution to a problem, I'm able to check myself more than if I am beat over the head by someone else telling me what I have to do. Yeah. And so I was hoping in that moment, that's kind of what I was trying to lay down. Hmm. And they gave very responsible answers to real-life scenarios that everyday people face whether or not it actually plays out that's another thing well but i mean but it's interesting though when you when you talk about when you ask somebody a question and they can answer without being prompted you know it's in there yeah right you know that that answer is in there that hopefully potentially can come out in the future in the right time um but if you just tell them the answer if you tell them what you want them to know and how you want them to act you don't really know if it's in there yep so that's pretty awesome and they were over at our place playing. Uh, my son got a new video game, too. He's just like yours. Like, my son watches video game walkthroughs on the computer all the day. And I'm like, That's, you're not doing anything. You are such a voyeur right now. You're not increasing your skills. You're not doing whatever. And he was excited about, um, what's it called? Like, Mario Creator or Mario... Maker? Mario Maker 2. He's been chatting my ear off about this game nonstop. And so I finally got it for him. And a couple days before his birthday, like, I made a level for him. And it was really fun, actually. 
Like I made it a level that was really hard and I spelled out happy birthday and like coins and his name in it and everything. So as he's running through, he can collect like stuff that I made purposely for him. That's cool. But the, again, one of those moments where you get a glimpse into their little world and you're like, man, it's working. Is that our kids, I imagine just like yours, they fight over Nintendo, they fight over the TV, they all just want it. They don't want to share it, they don't want to acquiesce any of their interests for the sake of someone else. My son, and I told him right out of the bat, I was like, if you're playing this and your brother and sister are around, the moment you guys start fighting, it's done. That's it. That's a trigger. That means that you guys care more about this thing than you care about each other. That's completely unacceptable. So Homeboy, behind my back, makes a level in this game that his three- and five-year-old siblings can play. And it's called For My Siblings, which he spelled right, which was a win in my book. (laughs) But he made a super easy level for them that had some of their favorite characters. They all love Yoshi, so, like, Yoshi is in it, so they get to use Yoshi and beat this level. And it's so simple that my three-year-old beat it, and she was so proud of herself. And he was so, like, encouraging toward her. Hmm. And I'm like, what level did you? He's like, I made one for him. And that, like, swelled my heart so much. I'm like, this silly little game that, again, I I played it and it was fun, but I did not care about it near as much as he did. Yeah. I'm like, this is art. It's allowing him to create something on his own. It's allowing him to think about a bunch of different things that he's already interested in. I was like, and he was diplomatic right yeah. there. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. That's I wasn't true. expecting he, that. He set that up. I mean, I'm not saying it was, like, uh, you know, selfish, but I, he, he set that up to make it work for everybody. And that was smart. And that's, yeah, that's a good move. Yep. And he and I talk about stuff like that. I'm like, you you got to be smart about how you interact with certain things. And I was like, that is one of those moments where you were smart with how you interacted with things. You want something. You know the consequences of it not working out. So how do you politically or diplomatically or whatever ensure that you're going to have a good time well they need to have a good time and whether it has selfish motivations or not like that is something to maybe work out down the line but for this moment in time yeah that's a win buddy yeah for sure great job and he got to do it with a gift that he got there that he was asking for uh and in a way that he really enjoyed you know the subject matter so now every night he comes and tells me about like a a level that he creates Hmm. And all the different Mario characters that are in there. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. I'm like, oh boy, that sounds like something. Oh, and then he made one. <laughs> he made one that was impossible to beat. And Like on purpose? No, accidentally. Oh, okay. But I kept trying to beat it. And he's like, oh, Dad, here, just let, let me fix it and I'll add in this one little thingy right there that'll make it. I'm like, no, 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 I got this. And so I would not let up. I kept trying like a thousand times and he was getting bored. He's like, Dad, I just need to put a thing right there and then it'll be fine. I'm like, I can do it without it. It's all right. <laughs> and then I think I had to I had to get up and go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, whatever. Fix the thing. I'm like, ugh. And then he added the one little thing like exactly where it needed to be. And I don't know. It was neat. And I was I was really proud of him. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's, it's nice to see those little wins for sure. And I don't know why I'm so surprised when I'm like, there's good in him yet. Like, yes, he's an amazing kid. And yes, he does things that irritate me and that in the moment are snappy and whiny and need to be disciplined and need to be checked. But I mean, he, he's learning how to be a person just as much as anybody else is. Yeah. And when those amazing moments shine through, it's, you know, verification that we're not completely screwing him up. Yeah, it's easy in the day-to-day, you know, to get wrapped up and to be kind of jaded by all the frustrating, annoying parts of parenthood. Um, And I I think, like, in the days, that's the stuff that really sticks out. In the years, like that quote I was talking about a couple weeks ago, um, you know, the days are long, but the years are short. Like, when we look back... The good stuff, I think, hopefully, is what will surface in memory. Mm-hmm. But in the day, man, that frustrating stuff, just it seems so out of proportion. It seems so like, like you're always frustrated with this one behavior or this one person or whatever. But Well, I asked my dad. I, he called me one day while I was in the throes of being just 
really just kind of defeated with how my son was just upset about everything and how he was just negative about everything. And I asked my dad, I'm like, did, did my brother and I act like this? Like, is this something that you had to go through? And he was like, not really. Yeah. I'm like, well, he, my dad was at work all the time. I mean, he was in the Air Force and he worked 24-hour shifts and, and, you know, my mom passed away so I can't really ask her. And I'm like, I, I wonder if it really was this frustrating or if they were just so busy that all the things that I remember that I was interested in, they just kind of let me give up on because they could see I really just didn't care as much. Hmm. Well, so I don't know if that comparison is the same. I don't know that it is because, I mean, you are not your son. It, uh, there's a True. lot of similarities. I can see True. a lot of similarities between my kids and, and me, but we are not the same people. And so it would be easy to, to say, like, well, you know, my parents had to go through this or my parents had to deal with this, and just they're different, you know. And times are different. I mean, the, the type of stuff that we get uh, or that our kids get interested in and have access to is different than what it was when we were young, and which is different than it was when our parents were young, you know. Right. So it'd be nice to say, like, to commiserate and be like, oh, yeah, it was just as bad, and you turned out okay, or, you know, whatever. It's not necessarily the same thing. It's just... And honestly, I don't know how helpful that really would have been. I yeah. don't know what I was expecting out of that conversation. Well, I mean, you want, you know, you want to feel like somebody else went through what I'm going through, and they survived, and I ended up being who I am. And so if I started out as a terrible whatever, and I ended up who I am, then hope is good. Yeah. You know? But I think there's hope even if we don't have that. Even if we don't have that, like, person that says, oh, I was there too, or you you were the same way. I mean, it, like you're saying, we put a lot of focus on the little stuff that ultimately may not even matter, but we feel like it matters. We feel like it's going to, you know, tell us whether they're going to go to jail or not when they're older. But hopefully I had not. this thing when he was younger. And I was like, how early can you do scared straight? <laughs> like, just to knock it out of the way. <laughs> Not that he you know, is bad or, or anything. Just to be done. To firmly establish, like, a fear of jail. So that's something I don't have to worry about. I mean, honestly, you could fake jail. He didn't know what jail is. You could make your own thing and just tell him he got sent to jail. Make it terrible enough that it would, you mm. remember, you can do that at any point. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not saying I suggest that. But it is a possibility. Apparently for him, it would just be like pulling weeds. This is a place where everybody pulls weeds all day. <laughs> That's the worst thing in the and world. And there's no switch. Dun, dun, dun. My computer's broken. So when we went to, talking about the switch and video games and stuff, we went to Italy. Um, we may have already talked about this, but while we were there, the friends that we were staying with, they have a son and a daughter who are about the same age as our two oldest and they're like a year older each or something, but it, pretty close. And they were friends when we all lived in Savannah and stuff. And their oldest is 12, I think. And they live not on base, but, you know, in this town that's next to a base in Italy. And it's a small town. But we went somewhere and they were just like, talking to their 12-year-old, like, hey, uh, we'll be back later on. We're going to drive to Verona or wherever we went. We'll be back later. Do your homework. <laughs> and then we left. And I was like, so, and, and he had to ride his bike into town to go to practice or something and then come back, do his homework, and then he got to play video games. And we were going to be gone all day long. And I'm like, you let your 12-year-old like, take that amount of responsibility? There's no way. I wouldn't trust all four of my kids jammed together as a single person to have that amount of <laughs> With responsibility. With their powers combined? Yeah. No. And he did. And he's a different kid. He's a different personality and stuff. But during that trip, Jenny and I were walking one night, and we were talking about how they, as a couple, our friends, dealt with their children differently than we do and the amount of trust that they have differently than we do. And how the kids are different. You know, we talked about all that stuff, but we, in the moment, we're just kind of like, you know, we need to back off. Like, there's, there's a lot of important stuff. There's a lot of stuff that matters that will have an effect on who a kid becomes. But we also just need to, like, let them be. Even if they make some mistakes, if they don't do stuff right, if they overwatch TV or if they overplay video games, 
like maybe we should just back off. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I think th- this trip that I'm talking about is kind of in that same light. Like I want to empower him. I want to be able just to let him make the decision for where we eat. Um, and I, I think the rationale behind just the two of us or just a substantially smaller group than our entire family is that we can be more mobile, whoever it ends up being, whether it's myself or my wife or anybody else, you can be more fluid. Mm. You can allow him to make a decision and he can take onus of that trip and he can actually learn stuff because he got to internalize things rather than just being dragged along. Mm. And part of me, I I want to ask him where he wants to go, but I'm afraid like, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to sit here and do nothing. Like, but it's just, so I'll put you in a situation I go, okay, now what do you want to right. do? Pick from the things around you. Yeah. Like you are a place. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. I dropped something. Yeah, that's, that's And when we go places, like when we drive around town, I I ask all of them, but I ask them, I'm like, which way do I need to go? Hmm. And so they tell me turn by turn directions. And when we turn we take a wrong turn, we go the wrong way. <laughs> and eventually I'll turn around into like a parking lot somewhere. That's funny. It's because I, I want them to be able to be independent, and I want them to feel that level of independence, even though it is pretty guarded. Um, yeah. We had the conversation the other day as to why he doesn't get to stay home by himself. Hmm. And I forgot what it was, but we were talking about, like, a landline phone. And I was like, all right, let's say that you are home by yourself. Uh, we needed to go somewhere, and you weren't doing very much of anything, so you know what, Deacon, you can just stay here. Like, what would you do if something bad happened? Like, if you hurt yourself or if something was on fire, like, where would you go and what would you do? Because I know as a kid, during the summer, I would pick up the phone and I would call 911 or I would call their work number, which I had memorized. Yeah. Like, he can't do that. Right. Like, that doesn't exist as an option anymore. I was like, so, it, you know, it's not the only reason he doesn't get to stay home, but it, it's me explaining in a logical way. And then he was like, so I can get a phone? I'm like, no. (laughs) That's not how that would work. That would probably solve a portion of these issues. I was like, but it's something that I never really thought about. Hmm. And like you were saying earlier, equating you and I being able to stay home as kids to our kids staying home as kids, like there are things culturally and societally that are different. Yeah that need to be addressed before it is a one-for-one conversation. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that's not a one-for-one conversation. Like, I think we talked about, I don't know if it was on here or not, but how, you know... Okay, so I lived in this neighborhood growing up when I was very young, up until third grade. So I'm literally talking about the same streets. I would Mm -hmm. get on my bike as a seven, eight-year-old and ride my bike by myself, I wouldn't have to tell anybody I was leaving. I wouldn't have to tell anybody when I was coming home. I would go. I would go into the woods. I would go on trails. I would go in people's backyards and construction sites and play on dirt hills and would just come home whenever I was done. And I never got in trouble for that. I never got like, I thought you were dead. (laughs) Nothing like that. I just went, right? And the thought of Maybe not my oldest, but my younger ones doing that now. I'm like, there's no way. Like, they don't have the sense to not even look both ways when they pull out of our driveway. They're going to get hit by a car before they even leave the house. Like, I'm just, you know, and that's me being overprotective and unrealistic and worst case scenario. I get it. But I, you also think about things like if they're out by themselves, they can't, protect themselves if some rando like drives by and wants a kid they just snatch them off the bike and then they're gone the reality apparently because i've looked this up is that child violence and like random abductions and stuff like that is down like 80 something percent from the 1980s Hmm. (laughs) like it doesn't happen anymore at least here or in this area but and so it was more likely to happen when i was a kid but i'm still way less uh, you know, apt to let my kids do what I did, even though the chances of it of something bad happening are pretty different. And I think you're right; it's a society thing. Yep. There's just a different kind of stigma to a kid going around by themselves, to the what ifs, to the responsibility of the parent. Whereas I, I think if something had happened to me, you know, if I was like riding my bike around, I climbed up on a big dirt hill in a construction site and fell and broke my arm, that's not my parents' fault. That's my fault for being a stupid kid in the wrong place. 
now the parent would probably be sued because would the, they? I think so. There's it's just there a different like litigious nature and responsibility has to land somewhere other than the obvious child who shouldn't have been somewhere. I don't know. I think there's a bunch of stuff like that that's very different that affects what we let our kids do. Well, things like this, I've thought about stuff like this. Um, we have lived in our house uh, about a year and a half. We've tried to meet our neighbors. Like, we, we know a lot of them. My wife has organized, like, block parties, like, for the purpose of building a community on our street. And I remember... Um, I think it was on No Dumb Questions. Destin was asking a question about, you know, how many people do you know in your general area? And he was talking about rings outside of your house, so like yeah. one house away or two houses. Like, do you know those people? Right. And I took that to heart. And we do. We know quite a bit of them. And when our kids go ride their bikes, they go ride on the sidewalk, which is beside a semi-busy street. Mm-hmm. And then they go down the street, and then they turn around in our neighbor's driveway, and then they come back up. And the people who live next door, they have kids that are, you know, love our kids. And they'll run over there to their house and go play. And part of me is not like, oh, my God, where are they? They're going to die. It's like, are you bothering them? Hmm. And then I went and I thought about that. Like, am I worried about them getting snatched up? Or am I worried about them just, like, Messing up people's stuff, or I, I don't know. I think that's the thing that I'm more worried about is them being somewhere where they, someone else doesn't want them to be. I think it's a very like, I don't want to uh, be obtrusive to the people around me through my kids. But did you ever have one of those like, hey, you kids, get out of here? Actually, yeah, kind of. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, and I, I think that that's something that it wasn't terrible. It just made you stop and think, like, oh, okay, I shouldn't have been in that place. I mean, it may have been a life lesson. Um, so, but there was one time that there was a guy walking around our neighborhood, come to find out was completely harmless. He was a real estate agent going door to door, like passing out his card in case people wanted to sell their house. Sorry. So in, in our house, we have our front door and then there's a glass door and my kids are always in the front yard playing. They play in the front yard more than they play in the backyard because the pool is in the backyard and so it kind of gets in the way. And so we're in the house and we can see them or we'll be out in the front porch and just watch them. Like, I I don't have a problem with them being in the front yard, even with like cars on the street, because they know they, I I watch them and they they have a healthy respect for the road. Even when the ball goes in the road and all that, and when they want to get the mail, our mailbox like points out in the street, like everybody else's mailbox. And they like, if they see a car way down the road, they'll they'll back up and they'll stop. That's good. Um, But this guy who is, selling real estate or whatever, my daughter was out on the front porch or out on the little sidewalk, like drawing with chalk or whatever. And I pulled into the driveway and the guy is on like the, the sidewalk by the street. And so there's my front yard and my daughter is like an arm's length away from this dude by herself. I'm like what in the world is happening right now? Who is this person? Mm-hmm. And then my wife comes out the door and she's talking to the guy. I'm like, but my daughter is still like right there beside the dude. Yeah. And I'm like, can I help you? Like, what's he's like, oh, hey, I'm a real estate agent, whatever. And so he walks off. And I, I talked to my wife, and she had, like, turned around for the split second order. This is not to say that she did a bad job, but my, I guess my daughter was playing, and my wife was in the house. She could see her, but she couldn't see the guy as there was a thing in the house in a way. So the guy gives his business card to my daughter to give to my wife. And I'm like... Absolutely no. Yeah. So I go find a guy. I go down the road. I'm not going to kill him. But I'm like, in what world do you think it's okay to use a little girl, like, as a marketing tool? Like, A, you don't approach little kids like that for whatever reason. Like, that puts you in a position that you cannot back out of. Yeah. That's dangerous for for a grown man to approach a little girl for yeah. whatever reason. And honestly, you should know that. You should know that. And that was my point. I'm like, you should know that. You're a stinking grown-up that should be off limits in everybody's mind. If you're within earshot right now and you don't know that that's off limits, <laughs> that is off limits. <laughs> you talk to the parents. And in a lot of cultures, you talk to, if you are a man, you talk to the husband. Which, I mean, whatever. But don't talk to little girls. Just saying. Yeah. And so that moment had me kind of weirded out. Hmm. And every once in a while, we'll get random solicitors. Somebody like, hey, man, let me take a look at your roof. And 
like trying to sell books, college kids trying to sell books. I had a lady yesterday try to put me in the running for some stinking air purifier. I'm like, go away. I don't want that. Go away. <laughs> but they to, in order for them to annoy me at my door, they have to go through the place that my kids safely play. Right. And I don't know them. I don't trust them. They're not part of my community or the people that I have chosen to like, um, like hang out with or get to know and, and deem safe. So they're strangers. They're legit strangers. So it adds that little level of discomfort with yeah. letting the kids roam free. I don't think that they're registered sex offenders in any way or child predators, but I have no idea who that person is. Right. And you sell stuff door to door, which may have been cool back in the fifties, but now is not really, it's, it's kind of sketchy. Yeah. It's funny because that was a huge thing back in the day. Yeah. That was like totally. That's how you got vacuum cleaners, apparently. Yeah. So you talk about sex offenders. I I wouldn't do this as a parent unless you just really want to be paranoid. Um, but there is a registry. Yeah. And you can look up and find where people who are registered as sex offenders live. Um, and when we were new parents, I did that in our old neighborhood. And it was terrifying. Really? Yes. We were surrounded. Whoa. And not that I think people who make mistakes don't have, uh, you know, shouldn't have second chances and stuff, but uh, that's, I don't know, that's tough to swallow. That's tough to find, uh, to find out, you know, when you're a a young parent, Um, if you are not paranoid enough just from being a parent, that makes it worse. (laughs) So, but I mean, it's a good service to have. It's a good thing uh, to have that knowledge, I guess. But it's almost an unnecessary amount of pressure uh, that you're putting on, like the surroundings. You know, like you're mm-hmm. already paranoid about your kids and stuff. And anyway, just throwing that out. That is a thing in case somebody needs it. But where we live, like there's um, like businesses and stuff, kind of within walking distance, I guess. And one day when we were. I had the kids for something. I'm like, let's go walk to this restaurant. Let's go get breakfast. And it would be you know, normally a place that because of the, the traffic around, it would automatically be, let's get in the car. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, you can, you can walk there. And they were so excited to go walk there. And so now this whole new opportunity of places is within walking distance. And it honestly wasn't that dangerous. It was, there's sidewalks. There's sidewalks uh, uh, a lot in this town. Yeah. And so... For me, it is a delicate balance between being cordial to people you don't know because they're human beings and they are worthy of respect and kindness, and then being a little cautious around strangers. And that line does not exist. It is a gradient that flows depending on my mommy and daddy mood for the day. Yeah. So as a blanket, like, go. We were watching Stranger Things. Hooray, Stranger Things. My The thing my wife was asking more than anything in this, like, scary monster show is, why aren't they... They don't know where their kids are right now. <laughs> Never once are they asking about their kids. Now, well, they're kind of not. Yeah. And I thought back about, you know, my childhood and our childhood. It's like, my parents just told us to go play. Yeah. And I remember when it got dark, my dad would, like, bellow from the porch... And I could hear the voice in the wind, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's time for me to go home. Yep. Or the streetlight thing a lot of people have. Like, come back when the streetlights are on. Hmm. So um, one, of, one of the things I want to have is a dinner bell, like an old school mm-hmm. dinner bell in the backyard. Because you could hear that, I bet, for a mile, where we live and just the way things are laid out, I bet you could hear it pretty far. And I want to have that so that anytime my kids hear that sound, that means be home right now. And if it's dinner, then that means they need to be inside, you know, instead of playing outside or whatever. But I want to have that thing so I don't have to yell. Because <laughs> I don't want to sound angry. Like, yeah. everybody get back here. I just want them to know, like, when you hear that, that means... I'm not mad. I'm just projecting. <laughs> <laughs> Look how big this set is. Yeah. This is a large ship. And I'm. this is four bags in of 12, I Ooh. think. Uh, by the way, I'm working on the... Here it is. Here's the box, in case you're watching the video on YouTube. It is the, uh, what's this thing called? Blockade Runner. Yep. 
Couldn't think of the word. Tantive four. Tantive. I wonder what happened to the Tantive one through three. It didn't work out well for them. Mm. They weren't Tantive enough. What does Tantive mean? I don't know. <laughs> it's a made up <laughs> Star Wars word. I wonder if it is. I wonder if it's a real word. Where's my phone? I'll look it up. You're making something. You got to right, so hear it. What else uh, do we want to. Oh, I just literally just finished. Oh. oh. Hold the phone. Okay. Whoop. I am working on and just finished another Lego rescue helicopter. This is a smaller one. This is a Lego Technics little red and white Eurocopter uh, 135 looking model. Look, the rotor spins. Check it out. Yeah. It's spinny spinny. And then it's got a rescue hoist on the other Ooh, side. Look at that. One of my favorite things when I was in the Army That's pretty cool. was that I got to crew uh, a Huey helicopter, which a lot of people know. Very mm -hmm. iconic looking yeah. Vietnam helicopter. And I was doing medevac. And so I got to stand on the skids and kind of be the person that raises and lowers this hoist. It was very, it was very cool. Hmm. Uh, it was a lot slower than my helicopter. It was a lot louder. It was the dumber version. <laughs> But it was something about, like, you you were connected to the past in a way. Hmm. And it was very cool. So I got to dance on the skids of a Huey, and this is what this is reminding me of. So this is pretty neat. So boom. Helicopter completed. Oh, and I'm going to show people. You got me something for my birthday. Oh, yeah. It's super swell. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I talked about... So this is the LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module. The Lunar Module that we put together... The Lego sets, or you put together Lego set. I put together one at home. I said I couldn't find a model of one. You found a model. It's a monogram model that is 148 scale. It's a glue together. It's got the orange, or not the orange, the gold foil and stuff that needs to be applied to this thing. This is a legit uh, lunar excursion module. It's an old model. school model. It was uh, 70s, 80s? I don't remember exactly. It said the year of the model on when I got it, but... I tried to find one that was, um, oh, well, this is 94 right there, so it would have been a 25th anniversary, so probably 94. Hmm. Yeah, oh, anyway. This is appropriate. On the 50th anniversary, I'm putting together a 25th anniversary yeah. model. So nice. it's a 25th anniversary model of the 25th anniversary of the Whoa. lunar landing. Anyway. Yeah, Th so that's w like the old school models where they don't look as cool. Like, you'll get it done, and you'll be like, eh. Yeah, it doesn't look as cool as the new models do, but yeah. But the pictures on the side look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's cool about that one is that it comes with a base plate of moon. Mm -hmm. It's like a giant gray sheet with like footprints in it and stuff already. I think that's awesome. Anyway, uh, tantive is not a real word. Oh, okay. By the way, it uh, is a specialized Star Wars word that sounds like an English adjective, this wouldn't be dissimilar to the names Darth, like Invader, or Insidious, or Maul, which are inspired by evil-sounding English words. Hmm. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that Sidious was from Insidious. Yep. Or Vader was from Invader. Or Indarth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Indarth. In, I think it's pronounced Endurth. <laughs> Endurth. Anyway. All right. Well, you got anything else? Uh, no, I thought you were going to say something. I probably was, but oh, I don't okay. know what it was. Um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Oh, hold on. Anthony had a message for me. Where'd my phone go? A message? She, he was writing me something. Anthony, just say what you were writing me on my phone, because I don't know where my phone went. Oh, I was just sending press and cons for Discord. Oh. But we're... Yeah, we're about an hour in. We'll do pros and cons next time. So if you want to send us pros and cons or topics or whatever, the best way to do that is to be a patron, because then you get to be on the Discord server where it's like a chat server with other patrons we go there and we ask for questions ask for pros and cons and all that stuff um the patreon if you want to help out this show and specifically well specifically this show but generally i like to make stuff go to patreon.com slash i like to make stuff and that's we're doing more with that yep these days uh patrons get to see videos early anytime we can we can't always do that, but the last couple we weeks they've gotten it at least two days earlier than everybody else. Yeah, uh, behind the scenes and like extra goofy videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. Always go over there first. They've seen several that are not out yet for the general public. So yeah, yeah if you're into behind the scenes stuff, extra stuff, we're trying to bolster Patreon as that thing. So it's a good way to get that and to help out this show. Go to Patreon. Um, and pros and cons. So the yeah. way pros and cons work for for new people. 
Is it somebody would give us a topic? Bob and I get to talk about whether we find that topic favorable or unfavorable. So, I don't know, random ones like the prequels. No. Con. Con. That's a hard con. <laughs> Sunscreen. You know, silly things like that. So, if you have mm. a silly topic or a silly thing that you have in your life that you think is neat, other people don't think is so neat, or vice versa, and you want us to weigh in on it to either become the ultimate authority on the that's, thing. Yeah, that's really what this is about. I mean, let, let's cut to the chase. <laughs> Then write it to us. Either write to us on the uh, No Instructions Podcast Instagram. We mm -hmm. post pictures of, like, after we're done building today, this picture will go up so you can see kind of what we're doing. Write it to us on there. Uh, if you are one of the patrons, you can go on the Discord server and you can talk there. Uh, there's No Instructions Podcast on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Maybe on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook in like a year. We have it on Twitter. I think there might be on one or two. Maybe. Twitter. I don't know. I don't check it. Or anyway. you can find Bob or I directly. I'm at Josh underscore make stuff on all the things. And Bob is at I Like to Make Stuff. We're all at I Like to Make Stuff everywhere else. Yeah. So get a hold of us. Uh, become a part of this show. If you like to listen to it, it is so simple for you to become an active member. That's true. So reach yeah. out to us. It's free to talk to us on the internet. If you didn't know that. <laughs> you know, the paper minute or anything like you used to. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. All right. You got anything else? No, man. Cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. Later. Last word, <laughs> <laughs>